I, I truly believe that uh, China is going to be the, the world leader in electrification. I'm also predicting that China will probably dominate the American market with a variety of different cars. Drinking champagne and eating shrimp, maybe they make this stuff up on the spot in some <laughs> fancy uh, bar or something, but uh, I'll never trust anything out of them anymore. There was nothing to talk about. They they just don't they don't have what it takes. Mm -hmm. They they're way behind in um, in ADAS. They're way behind in their electronics. They're way behind in lane even lane keeping and 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 emergency stopping. The BMW is sad. Hello， 大家好。今天呢，我非常荣幸邀请到三 D m o r o 来本人的频道，和大家一起分享特斯拉的一系列细节。三 D 呢是资深的汽车拆解专家，他曾就任于福特十年之久，之后呢自己创立了公司，自费购买车辆拿回来做拆解报告，并且提出改进建议。市面上很多知名的车企都向他的公司 m o r o a s s o c i a t e 咨询过建议，包括马斯克也曾经收纳过他对特斯拉的改进的提议。三 D 最知名的事情呢，就是他曾采访过马斯克本人，并且呢，他很支持特斯拉的使命。三 D 之前每年也会去中国几个月时间，所以他对中国车企也有着自己的见解。今天呢，我们会从特斯拉的领先优势、竞争对手，包括美国、中国还有欧洲等，还有产品、技术、电池等多个角度来进行这次采访。问题呢，全部来自咱们频道的观众。如果你关注的点被三 D 截获，记得留言告诉我。视频语言呢，会使用英文。但是后期呢，我会逐字加中文字幕，制作耗时不易，麻烦大家发财的小手点点赞。三弟经常来咱们频道转。好了，正片开始。Hi, Sandy. Welcome to my channel. It's a great honor to have you here, sharing your thoughts and knowledge to Tesla Chinese community.、Uh, my subscribers were making fun of my hairstyle, so I did get a haircut right before this recording. <laughs> <laughs> really? My,、oh. Yeah, like twenty minutes before. <clears throat> Do you mind、oh, start off with some simple introduction about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, um, I've been、um, I've worked at lots of different jobs. I've been、um, uh, basically deeply involved in electric vehicles, starting in Japan, or sorry, not Japan, starting in China at about 2014.、Um, I I worked with many Chinese companies、um, in the agricultural area, automotive. Um, aircraft,、um, and but mostly in uh, in uh, manufacturing of appliances and things like that. So I'm very familiar with China. I can speak a few words enough to,、uh, you know, my favorite word is "boye boye" for dinner. Right? <laughs> that's the guy that's going to bring me dinner. So,、um, so I I like China a lot. I spent a lot of time there.、Uh, last time I was there was in 2019, and as you probably know. Most of the visas were canceled and stuff like that, so I haven't been back since then.、Uh, but I, I spent about three months a year in China, so I'm kind of familiar there.、Um, in the United States,、uh, we have a YouTube channel, Mineral Live, and、uh, we tear apart all kinds of different、uh, vehicles, all all、mm -hmm. electric vehicles. But、uh, but we、uh, we we have quite a file following、uh, around the world, actually. Some some people even in China. So yeah,、uh, and I've worked for Ford Motor Company, a variety of different machine tool companies. When I was young, I was a tool maker before an engineer. Um, that that's that should round it out, I, I guess. It's great.、Uh, you're being very honest about your experience. We all know that.、Uh, let's、yeah. start off with some competitive landscape, like people care much about. What would、yeah. you say, like the Tesla's biggest competitive advantage and disadvantage, in probably simple terms? Their biggest advantage, number one, would be、um, electronics and software, and I don't,、um, I don't split those up because, in essence, you can't have the software work if you don't have the electronics in the right place, and electronics、uh, with massive amounts of software can just choke and die. So、uh, for me,、uh, Tesla's biggest advantage is probably、um, in、uh, in software and electronics. Second would be、um, in the ability to manufacture.、Um, so manufacturing their own batteries, manufacturing their own big giant castings, manufacturing their own seats. That's a huge, a huge advantage. And then their engineering staff is to die for. These guys are brilliant, 
And they're the guys that pretty much are guys and gals that pretty much have set Tesla on the course that they're on. They're, they're basically eclipsing everyone in the world. The Germans, mm -hmm. the Brits, the French, the Chinese, Japanese, it doesn't matter who it is. These guys are just mopping the floor with the world. I believe that they have maybe, when it comes to electronics, I think um, maybe six or eight years ahead of everybody. Wow. When it comes to uh, manufacturing and whatnot, that's definitely a solid, rock solid five or six years. And then uh, with their engineering people, that's uh, to, to gain the, the, the amount of brain power that they've got varying trust is what they'd normally use. Um, that would probably be a 12, a 12 year, so 10, 12 oh. year advance over everybody else. So they are, and, and they've got greater leadership, of course, that goes without saying Elon Musk, as long as he's in charge and they don't, they don't put a Harvard MBA in charge, they'll do uh, remarkably well. Yeah. Awesome. Huge. Yeah, you got ahead of me. Uh, I was about to ask you, you mentioned about a year ago that there was no competition. And it seems yeah. like the competition is like five years at least to 12 years most mm -hmm. ahead. So yeah. that's, uh, that's a pretty good future uh, as I'm seeing. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's your thoughts on the next best auto companies next to Tesla? Like who has the most overall package that can, you know, let's see, call them the second EV or auto company. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna split this up into um, U.S. and European and Japanese, and then Chinese. I'll talk separately about. Awesome. So um, in North America and in Europe, um, I think the guys that are the furthest ahead would be number one after Tesla. Number two actually would be Ford, and number three would be uh, Rivian. So those are the two here. After that, they're all pretty much in the same batch. Mm -hmm. If I look at Europe, then uh, you're looking at the Polestar, the Volvo, which is actually Geely. Mm -hmm. um, and they have brilliant cars. And wow. then when I look at the, uh, the Far East, um, I would say that Hyundai, Hyundai's vehicles Hyundai. are, probably, are probably the uh, Far East leader. Wow. And that would round things up. Uh, round things out as far as who's got what in those areas. However, I'm also predicting that China will probably dominate the American market with a variety of different cars. And the reason I know that is because I worked with a lot of different car companies when I was in China. And I believe that by 2030, China will own about 30% of the U.S. market Ooh. because they have products that are ready to go right now. They control all the batteries. They have um, similar electronics. They understand electronics like um, as good as anybody else. Software may be a little bit of a leg, but uh, but I don't think that's going to be that's not going to be something that's going to hold them back. So I believe that the Chinese will come in and take over a huge. And I'm not alone either. There's another um, website that you can have a look at called um, Connect the Dots. And mm -hmm. if you have a look at uh, if you have a look at their website, they'll have a chart there, and they have I call it Death Valley, they call it the Valley of Death, and same thing. I see the demand, and I see the supply. Oh my God! There isn't going to be enough. People are going to want them now, and they're not going to be able to get them. And the only way to get them, as far as I'm concerned, is to get them from China. And I know that uh, you know the president's going to try and stop that, but with the world events the way they are, there's going to be have to be some deal making, and um, I don't I don't put too much faith in leadership uh, here in the United States. And I think that we they'll open that. the gates for China, and uh, that'll be that. And uh, so some of the big guys are going to maybe disappear or or get so low in the market share that they won't have a chance. And I I truly believe that uh, that China is. Um, China is going to be the uh, um, China is going to be the the world leader in electrification. Yeah. That's really high praise. Can I you understand this in an analogy that it's more like how the Japanese industry, auto industry, yes. invaded in the U.S. prior? Right. Right. Now it's the China. Okay. Yeah. 
I feel that but way. The, but the Japanese sat on their hands. And uh, so Toyota and Honda and all the other Japanese car companies, they went in the wrong direction. They went in a direction for fuel cells in cars. Like I think fuel cells in mm -hmm. aircraft, big ships, uh, and big trucks is a good idea, really good idea. But I don't believe that, um, that it's a good opportunity for a car. It just, it's too big. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't run fast enough. Um, and then I still need a ton of batteries in order to make it all work. So for other things, fuel cells would be good. And both Honda and Toyota took that path. Mm -hmm. And then Toyota, of course, they came out with the first, they came out with the Prius, which is still hugely popular, the hybrid. Yeah. But uh, they, they should have gone to BEV. They should have gone to uh, battery electric vehicles, and they didn't. I don't know the secrets behind why they did that, but they didn't. Yeah, yeah and they are still pushing pretty hard on hydrogen and other alternative energies. Which is sometimes sometimes what happens with a company is that they placed a bet. They they know that the bet was bad, mm -hmm. but they they just keep marching it along in hopes that magic will happen and um, okay. and the bet that they made will will come true to them. But like every other gambler, the more you gamble, the less likely you are of winning. It just it doesn't happen that way. Sometimes you just gotta suck it up and and move on. So, uh, since you were like coming from an engineering background, what's your yeah. thoughts on, you know, given the history of associate interest with gas and oil, could gasoline vehicles have any breakthrough innovation in the future? For some reason, they just come out of from the tubes and revival again? No. no. <laughs> Short answer. <laughs> Great. No. That's it what just, I was hoping to. It, uh, it just can't happen. I mean, when I was working at Ford um, and with other companies, we tried using um, hydrogen and natural gas. Mm -hmm. um, and it works as long as you want to change from a conventional engine to um, what's called a monoblock. A monoblock engine has the cylinder head and, uh, and the engine block cast in one. And uh, I can, because if you don't, the amount of power that's inside the combustion chamber will blow the it'll blow the head right off but if it's all made in one mm -hmm. you can um you can pretty much make it so that the spark plugs and fuel injection system won't won't blow up and uh, then you can make it happen but it's an expensive slow process and there's a tremendous amount of scrap and whatnot that goes along with it so it's better if you um it's better if you just uh go with uh, electric and i don't think uh the buying once the buying public moves away from uh, gasoline and mm -hmm. diesel fuel, they're gonna they're not gonna come back. People don't come back to the reversible old fashioned stuff. Yeah, cool. Uh, let's get back to China a little bit. Yeah. What's your point of view on the rising EV China market? Like, can you give us some brands that you are specifically interested about? Like, maybe rank them if you can. BYD, and, I think, is going to dominate. Um, BYD is going to dominate? Yes. Um, they're already here in the United States making buses. Mm -hmm. I've seen lots of their vehicles. Um, they Obviously, they make um, every type of battery you could imagine, but they're very famous for uh, the, uh, the iron, lithium-ion batteries, uh, mm -hmm. lithium-ion phosphate batteries. In essence, if you want huge amounts of battery packs, uh, they, they win. But then you've also got Geely, who's already entered big time, entered the, the mm -hmm. European market. You've got Neo, you've got uh, Che Ping, you've got, uh, you got, and then you've got sitting out in the, out in the weeds. So you've got Beijing Automotive, FAW. These companies are huge and they have a lot of money in back of them. So they can, all of them can come in and, uh, and capture a good portion of market share uh, if, they've, if they've got the running room. Mm -hmm. So actually, we have one uh, one small car here uh, called an Imperium. Well, it's Imperium Motors, but it's called a Skywell, and it's very small market share in in uh, in uh, China. But I have one, and uh, everyone that's driven it says, "Hey, this is a great car." 
it's no barn burner. It doesn't go like a rocket ship. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It gets you here and back again. It's got a gigantic rear door. If you've got kids or if you've got, you know, you got to take grandma out of the store or something, it's absolutely brilliantly perfect. Even even if you've got big guys, I mean, you're living in the States. <laughs> you've got some giant people in the United States. And um, having a door that, that can accommodate somebody who weighs maybe 300 pounds or something like that or 150 kilos, that, um, that that's a kind of a handy, uh, that's kind of a handy car to have. It drives well. It's easy to figure out. It's not like there is a learning curve associated with a Tesla, but mm -hmm. with the Skywell, nothing. I mean, it's, it's easy, easy to figure out and whatnot. So I think cars that are maybe small time in China might, uh, might get into, in fact, I know they, they're, they're going to get into Canada first. And then they're going to swing through from Canada into the United States. And uh, it'll just happen. It'll just happen. Wow. But there's a there's a ton. Of, I mean, there, when I was in China, there was 600 and around 650 car companies. And uh, Chairman Xi, uh, the last speech I made in China, mm -hmm. Chairman Xi, he took over the, the I was supposed to be the keynote. He took over as keynote and uh, said, you know, basically, we're all Han, we're all Chinese. Um, uh, go and talk to your brothers and sisters and cousins and what have you, and um, and shrink the 680 or 650 down around 300. And uh, and then I want no more than 150 car companies in China. We don't need any more than that. Mm -hmm. That's a big shrink. Um, yeah. And some of these companies are going to be looking for places where they can dominate a market. And uh, it might be that Skywell will, the Skywell, I, I don't know what their Chinese name is, um, but here yeah, it's called Skywell and it. Imperium. Imperium, you can find, um, it's a Canadian company that's importing them. But, um, but Price was right. And like I say, I've driven it a lot. Mm -hmm. It's got terrible tires. The tires need, needed to be changed. So I bought uh, some new Michelins and put them on. They work fabulously now. But the tires were given no end to problems. So, okay, I'll definitely check it out. Um, mm -hmm. Let's switch back to the U.S. a little bit. Uh, you said Ford was number two, and then followed by Rivian. Yeah, I only drove Ford Mach E, and I haven't tried the F one fifty Lightning yet. But I don't know, for some reason, Rivian just looks a little bit better. So when you say they're number two, yeah. are you talking about the entire manufacturing capacity or yeah, software and engineering. Yeah. Um, and by the way, Rivian at number two is a very, very close, or sorry, number three. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ford is number two, Rivian is number three, but they are very, very close. Um, distant from that, and I mean a lot distant, BMW, mm -hmm. VW, General Motors, um, every big name you can think of, mm -hmm. they're way, way down the line because... If you, if you, I, I, we just did a, a, a six car comparison. We had um, a Hyundai, we had the Iconic, or mm -hmm. Icon, or whatever it is. Ionic um, or something. Ionic 5, yeah. um, the BMW iX, um, the Mach E, the Lightning, the Rivian, and a Tesla. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, Apart from apart from the uh, Rivian and the Fords, it we couldn't get a and, and the Tesla. On the other three cars, I mean, there was there was nothing to talk about. They they just don't they don't have what it takes. Mm -hmm. They they're way behind in um, in ADAS. They're way behind in their electronics. They're way behind in lane even lane keeping and 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 emergency stopping. The BMW is sad. I mean it. Really, I could not. I couldn't believe it. I, I was expecting lots better. It drives really well, as long as you're driving, um, you know, normally mm -hmm. human, human, just human, one hundred percent human. But if you depended on any of the electronic stuff, you were unhappy, definitely unhappy. The Ionic would have been um, the Ionic Five. That that would have been um, uh, probably after the Fords and the um, and the uh, Rivian and the Tesla, it would have come in next. Oh, yeah. 
that's pretty insightful. Um, let's switch back to the Tesla products and uh, maybe you can give us more technical understanding. What's your take on you know, a lifespan of a Tesla vehicle regarding either years or mileage? Like how much speed up can we do to the car? Hmm. All right, so we have people who have a, a, a million miles on mm -hmm. Model S's and Model, uh, model, y, uh, model X's. Uh, we've, we get the numbers in from people and, and it's just staggering. They've never spent a penny on, uh, they've never spent a penny on, on um, electricity because if you bought the early ones, mm -hmm. they were free. A million miles on the battery pack. Um, they're still getting somewhere around 85% of the, uh, of the battery part of, of the battery pack is there. Mm -hmm. And because of, there's so many batteries in it, they can go from whatever they want to a road trip is not a problem. And in fact, the guys that are doing it are, uh, are doing uh, long distance hauls from Los Angeles to uh, Los Angeles to um, uh, Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. They're bringing people that don't like to fly people. So a lot of people are afraid to fly. So they just drive them. And uh, this guy's making a huge living at it. Wow. Uh, so at, as far as uh, what you might have read by an analyst, I'm tired of analysts. Um, they've never had a job. They make this crap up. It's all it's all based on if it bleeds, it reads. That's that's kind of like what it is. And in fact, I just got some charts <clears throat> comparing all the different car companies. And mm -hmm. I got one chart that's talking about the um Altman Z score, which basically tells you the health of a company mm -hmm. versus um, profitability of each company versus uh, Moody and S and P. Mm -hmm. Wow, the the Moody people and the S and people, where are they getting their data from? They're saying that that uh, that Tesla basically is a B plus. Yeah, and every, and and yet they you go and you look at some of these other car companies and they're they're in the green. What are you kidding me? Nobody's making money like Tesla. The Altman Z Z score basically tells you who's going to be around, who who can you invest in. That's really what you want. Mm -hmm. But anything that has to do with Moody's or or actually there's quite a number of them. They're using these analysts, and I I don't know what they do. Maybe they. Uh, when they're drinking champagne and eating shrimp, maybe they make this stuff up on the spot in some <laughs> fancy, uh, fancy uh, bar or something. But uh, I'll never trust anything out of them anymore. Not after seeing, yeah, this lady, her name is, uh, you can, her name is Alexandria M-E-T-Z, I think. Okay. And then, uh, and then, and then she's got a, um, yeah, Tesla, Tesla, Boomer, as in baby Boomer, Mama. Mm -hmm. Tesla, mama. Boomer, Mama. And if you look that one up, she's got her charts up there. Okay. Unbelievable. She knows what she's doing. She, she's a real financial analyst. These other clowns, I don't know. I'd like to say they pull their numbers straight out of their ass. They're useless. <laughs> They're totally useless. Let's get to the manufacturing part a little bit more. So you talk about Tesla sure. made great progress during the past five years on reducing parts and process, saving millions of dollars compared to traditional car manufacturer. So the question yeah. is, if the car made by GigaPress involved in like a car accident, how to repair the damaged park? And will the vehicle easily be considered total by insurance company? Therefore, you know, increase monthly premium or damages in the long run? Yeah. No, that's uh, that was some fear tactics that were put out by quite a number of different OEMs that wanted everybody to still drive um, gasoline cars. Mm -hmm. The range anxiety, that came right out of um, OEM marketing. Um, and, and quite frankly, the press loves anything that's gonna be controversial or, or scare tactics, or if it bleeds, it reads, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. It's all baloney. So here's, here's what happens. If you get into a car crash and it's under like 50 miles an hour and you smash your car up, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a whole bunch of things in the front of the vehicle. They're called crash cans. Those crash cans collapse. Your fascia is gone. And there'll be some damage to the, um, uh, some of the other components. Like you're probably a radiator is going to take some serious hit. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So you pull those parts off, you put them on, they're done. Does it matter whether it's a steel frame or whether it's an aluminum die casting frame? No, no, because they're both made to survive. Mm-hmm. Now, if you get into a crash and you're slammed into by somebody going a hundred miles an hour, both a steel car and a an aluminum cast car are going to survive the crash. You will survive. However, the car is a write-off, no matter whether it's steel oh, or total. aluminum. Now, what can you do if you get a break? Let's say you you somehow you you think you're going to want to repair um, a steel car or an aluminum car. Mm-hmm. All right, so the castings when they break, they're 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 broken. You can align the structure back up and you can TIG, uh, it's called tungsten inert gas or TIG weld. You can TIG weld it back together. Personally, I would never do it, never in a million years, but you could do it and you'd get back in business. The same sort of a crash in a steel car would make it impossible. You'd never be able to pull the longitudinals back so that they're square. And if Mm -hmm. that doesn't happen, that means that your wheels are never going to be in the in the right place and you're going to find that one of the tires actually both let's say it happened in the rear end your rear end tires would wear out much much faster than your front tires and they would wear on the sidewalls even if you rotated the tires all the sidewalls would be would be torn up and the reason for that is because the car isn't is tracking like a dog it, it isn't mm-hmm. tracking you know front to back the way it's supposed to one sets here one sets there not good. So I could probably repair a cast, um, a casting and make it so that the card be usable, but I would never do it. Um, when the insurance company says scrap it, that's what you should do. And if you get into something horrible, like a horrible crash, I think you've got more opportunity for, uh, uh, for survival in a casting car than you do a, a steel car. And the reason for that is because aluminum and magnesium absorb more shock before they uh, mm. crush than uh, than steel does. It just it is what it is. So I put my money on aluminum, yeah. not the other way around. It's not like oh no no it just, that's all baloney. That's all oh yeah again, marketing. We get back to analysts and reporters. Dumb shit, dumb shit. <laughs> and it's hard to say who's the dumbest, but that's kind of like what it works out. The same <clears throat> level, maybe. Yeah. Uh, let's switch topic to uh, cyber truck related since yeah. we're going to start producing that in 2023. Have you seen the real truck? And yeah, I did. Thoughts? Can you share like what you, what's your initial thoughts on that? Okay. So I went to, I was invited to the cyber rodeo, mm-hmm. um, myself, Eric and, um, and uh, Corey. And uh, we walked through the place and on the third floor, I think, we got a chance to go into one big room and there was a cyber truck and it was roped off and we couldn't drive it. We couldn't get in it. Uh, but, um, but I got on my back and slid underneath and looked at what it looks like to see whether this is a, a real prototype or maybe pre-production or mm-hmm. maybe just a bunch of styrofoam painted. I think, I think it looked really good. Now, I will tell you, I've got five on order, or Monroe and Associates got five on order. One is for teardown. One is for testing. One is mine. And the other two belong to other people in the company. Uh, there's a lot of us here that are, are waiting patiently, mm-hmm. getting anxious, but waiting patiently to try and, uh, I know I'm going to be happy with mine. And by the way, just so your audience knows, I do not get paid by Tesla. I know. Tesla has Nobody never paid, paid. anything. <laughs> Neither do, do they never pay me either, but people think they You're do. kidding. <laughs> oh, you're you're going to have to you're going to have to talk to them. You're young, you need more money. But uh, but I I've never been paid by uh, by Tesla. We don't accept um, we don't accept free cars from anybody. Um, I'm totally immune or removed from any of that that kind of stuff. It just destroys your credibility. If you start mm-hmm. taking gifts you're you're gonna lose yeah yeah actually some of the youtubers that have uh, moved away from uh, promoting 
what reality is and, and gone to, oh, well, I have this or I have that or these guys are paying me this. Everybody starts doing, you know, unsubscribe and delete and, or they never go there again. We're not interested in that at all. That's how you have a fair and just opinion on the real things happening right. instead of being influenced by. Have you have any understanding or thoughts on the semi truck? Because they are, I think the recent news is they stopped taking new orders. I think they're entering into the next phase. Do you have any thoughts you want to share on that product? Oh, the semi. Semi, uh, the, yeah. That's semi. A, yeah, okay. So normally in the auto world, we call those class eight trucks. Class, class eight. eight. Yeah. And um, so I have not seen that, but mm -hmm. I have seen others. I've seen the uh, the Mercedes, the Freightliner. Um, I've seen uh, and actually drove the uh, the one for uh, Nikola. Uh, these are these are things that are needed like really quickly. We should be looking at trying to get these things that this and buses. I I mean, I cannot believe we're still getting these unbelievable. They've got the, they, they don't even have to follow all the rules that everybody else does. Mm -hmm. And you see them spewing fumes out the tailpipe, it just drives me nuts. So I'm, I'm really a big fan of uh, class eight trucks being uh, electrified. Uh, people throw rocks at Nikola all the time and say, oh, well, you know, they push them down a hill and blah, blah. Well, that was one idiot marketing guy that did that. Okay. And he gave that, that, that tape in confidence to a reporter or an analyst or one of each. I don't know. Sure. But anyway, I was there. Okay. I drove mm -hmm. this thing around and I thought they had disconnected me from the trailer. I thought they had, they had drove it around with a trailer and I watched it and whatnot. Then I got in it and I thought they disconnected the trailer. Really? But they didn't. And I was driving a class A truck. I mean, I've done this in the past. I was driving a class A truck with a trailer on this track. And it was going like a scalded cat. And the guy said, oh, you might want to slow down a little bit when you're turning this corner. And I'm thinking, what for? Look at the size of this car. So anyway, I did what I was told. Then I came back and I swing in and I stop. And I get out of the truck and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was pulling this trailer. Huh. You didn't ah, realize I that. <laughs> I didn't realize it. That's how much power I had. Now, that mm. was on pure battery, right? Mm. The fuel cell, it's on there, but it, it didn't need to kick in because I had a lot of battery power. Then we did 180 feet of burnout. Oh. Burnout. Okay. He hit the gas and that thing screamed for 180 feet burning up the tires and whatnot if you go to the uh, if you go to our website or the the video mm -hmm. sandy's burnout or a view of little faith i'll, or one I'll of, put a I don't clip really, in here yeah oh my god i couldn't believe it i could not believe this i've never had anything like that usually you have to go through five gears before you can get up to 20 miles an hour this this thing was phenomenally fast unbelievably fast uh, with the ev truck so I see them as a big future. Like I say, I can't really, I can't really um, talk semi. about the, uh, the the electric semi from uh, what do you call it from Tesla because I've never, never touched it, seen it, whatever. But I can tell you for sure that the the one from uh, from Freightliner or Mercedes is that's ready to rock, and the other one is um, is Nikola, and I I actually got a chance to drive that one, so I'm really impressed with that one. Oh, that's very insightful. I'm really excited to see how Tesla is going to roll out their uh, semis. Um, let's talk about a cool. little bit about the batteries. I, I, I saw you did some videos about a 4680 batteries. Like, what's your take on Tesla's battery technology ahead of other competitors? And in you know, what areas, to be exact? I am a very big fan of the 4680. I, um, I am not as big a fan of pouch and prismatic batteries <clears throat> simply because they take them on a room. And when one of those uh, battery cells dies, you lose a lot of power, a lot. If you have five or 10 uh, cylindrical batteries go bad, what's the, who cares? I mean, they're only three, they're only three volts each. What, what difference does it make? You'll never, never notice the difference. But if uh, a whole 
cell dies in a battery module, you've lost the module. You can't balance. It won't balance. No big wow. So I think Tesla is about, um, from the chemistry standpoint, probably five years ahead of everybody. And they're not standing still. They're going to be doing more. And then if you, uh, if you look at the, uh, the amount of power that they can get out with a 4680 battery, it's just staggering, staggering. And you get less weight uh, because there's less steel in it. You, you get more energy and, and the cost goes down. I mean, I, I don't see how you could go wrong. You get better efficiency, better energy management. You get more power. Um, the, the weight gets less. Mm -hmm. Everything that you can do to increase efficiency is a good idea. And those battery packs do much, much better. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of those online too. Like you can, uh, I don't know how many more or how many behind we were, but I just filmed another video mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. So really, really awesome. I'll check it out when you post yeah. it. Well, so, it won't be posted for, I don't know when well, it's going to be. Monday. Oh, it's going to be posted on Monday. So there you Pretty go. Fast. Yeah. Well, Eric uh, doesn't fool around. <laughs> trust Eric <laughs> always. You trust Eric? Oh my God! <laughs> He's nodding his head, so that must be good. Yeah. Um. So I guess my follow-up question will be like: right now, 